Our next panel discussion is, talks a lot about changing face of human resources, post-pandemic HR strategies, future of workplace, talent and jobs, building social capital, HR tech is the next sunrise sector, the evolving HR sector and roles, emerging technologies in HRM. For this, I would like to call upon Dr. Sujeev Nair, CHRO and Chief Transformation Officer, Resustainability Limited, who would be moderating this session. Further, I would like to invite Sri Vinay Agarwal, Global Head, Business HR, Tech Mahindra. Next, I would like to call upon Fani Karnati, Associate Vice President, Data Science and Technology, SP Soft Global, Hyderabad. Would like to invite Ms. Anandita Mukherjee, Head Corporate Communications, Hyderabad Metro Rail. Would like to invite Professor Ganesh MP, Head Entrepreneurship and Management, IIT Hyderabad. Again, being a part of the panel discussion, we have Mr. Ashish Mittal, Group CHRO, Srinidhi Institutional Group. Last but not the least, can I please call upon Mr. Yadu Kishore Nandikola, Director Human Resources, Mass Mutual. So to begin the session, I would like to give it over to Dr. Sujeev Nair here. Very slow, uh, not many hands. So you know, to do justice to all of you and the panelists, I think, may I request all of you to stand up. Just stand in your places. See, the panelists are also energized. So we're going to do two things. Just follow me. Stand wherever you are and draw a circle. Wow. It's very nice. Cut the circle into half. This one, take two steps and push this part there. I can't see. People are just standing. I won't move to the next stage till this is done. Please, push this, take two steps, push it to the side. Yes. Again, the other side, push it two steps, this side. Wonderful. Now, go back and bring this spot here. Very nice. Again, go this side, bring this spot here. The circle is back. Give a round of applause and you can sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. A warm welcome to the distinguished panel members and special thanks to Indie Global Network and the government of Telangana for introducing this HR section into this two-day festival. We are talking about the post-pandemic period. What exactly has happened in the post-pandemic period? Hybrid workplace is almost real. A lot of technology, a lot of digitization. I'm sure all of us experienced. And because of this, connectedness and flexibility is almost given. Every one of us are demanding connectedness and flexibility. If you look at what's happening to organizations, there are a lot of Resignations. You must have heard and read about the great resignations. Organizations are really challenged to hold their people. They are coming up with new, new methods. They are looking at job rotations within the organization. They have stepped up their energies on emotional well-being, taking care of people. The social capital, the social connectedness is becoming very, very important in organizations going forward. In addition to that, very soon we are also expecting a lot of changes 
legislation changes, the wage code is going to come in. A lot of importance is going to be given on diversity, equity and inclusion. You know, all these things are working together in the minds of all people in the organizations. And most importantly, the connectedness between the reporting officer and the employees, the relationship between them, the engagement between them is becoming very, very important. With this brief background, we have a very august panel here, a combination of academicians and people from industry. And they are going to give us some insights in the changing phase of human resources. And uh, uh, first, let me invite uh, Mr. Vinay Agarwal, Global Head Business HR Tech Mahindra, to share with us some thoughts on the emerging technologies in HRM. Okay, I think uh, Mr. Vinay had come in, he must have stepped out. We will move to the next topic. Um, let me invite Ms. Anandita Mukherjee and Dr. M.P. Ganesh to talk about building social capital. Uh, good evening, everyone. So with all that half circles and full circles, I'm sure you're fully awake and just like a sun, you're shining. Okay, so um, yeah, these terms uh, were always there, you know, human capital, society capital. Now, only thing is that these came more into focus, I think, after pandemic. Because then we realized that what exactly is required from each one of us for each one of us. And uh, Dr. Nair, since it is an HR panel, I will uh, put my focus more on the employees. So in today's day, I guess uh, people have understood, organizations have understood that uh, uh, the employees can be the best ambassador for any company. They are the brand ambassadors. So if we don't leverage, if we don't value, if we don't respect that capital, because others can go on a depreciative mode, but not this. When everything goes down, that is where uh, you know the uh, human capital or it is much required. So as you know, we are not alone. We are all part of a continent and an ecosystem. It's not, we are not only alone in this planet. So I think as a collective effervescence, as we call it in sociology, what is more required is to be with each other, for each other, just to see what the other person is wanting or needing, especially particularly for HR, I'm sorry I'm not from HR, but many organizations, I'm not pinpointing anyone, HR becomes sort of a, a management representative, I'm so sorry to say, rather it should be the interface between the employees and the management. And if it is done, I think we have uh, really fulfilled our target or we have reached where we want to. It is that creating a shared value amongst the stakeholders. And as a family, we can look for the growth, for uh, you know, the development, the learning and development, the, uh, you know, the potential of a human capital. And automatically, maybe it cannot be tangibly uh, measured, but automatically, it definitely will have an impact on the bottom line of that company. And this has been proven. Maybe many don't want to acknowledge it or express it because in any organization, the revenue generating department are the most important. You know, the damad of a family, of the sasural. But, and all the uh, departments like HR, corporate communication, they are the cost centers. But these are the departments who can really pull up a company to reach to its uh, you know, you know, profit or you know, reach the huge EBITDA margin or whatever, the entire growth, and take that company towards a culture, towards the, the entire paradigm shift happens. You know, from a business, it grows up into an organization, and then it grows up to an institution with, if we for, can follow this, this is all what I can say. Good evening. Uh, I'll quickly explain what is uh, social capital for a common understanding. Social capital is the network of relationships which exist in a social group. 
So if you take organizations, these networks are very, very important because these are the networks through information flows, friendship flows, cooperation flows, knowledge flows. Okay. So post-pandemic has created a new kind of uh, environment or a context where whatever used to be normal is not normal now. Okay. We are in a new normal. Especially usage of media tools, uh, use, usage of virtual uh, workspaces have changed the entire dynamics. To give an example, you know, many of the campus uh, placement students who just got, got passed uh, during the pandemic time, they have never seen their office spaces. They are placed, but they have never gone to their offices. Okay? So how do you create the sense of belongingness, sense of being part of the network? That has become a huge challenge. Okay? And why it is important to bring this network? Like I said, trust. So, you know, you might be meeting this person in many meetings in a two-dimensional space. You, do, you don't even know how he or she looks like, you know, below his waist or her waist. You know, you only see the, uh, you know, photos or videos in, a, in your uh, meeting, online meeting. So, without the possibility of interacting face-to-face, -face, how do we build this network? That becomes a challenge, okay? One way through which and, and more and more people are getting used to this kind of a culture also. In fact, initially when pandemic happened, there was a lot of resistance to work from home. But now things are slowly settling down. In fact, now many people are not willing to uh, go back to offices, or at least they want partially work from home. Because the freedom of working from home, in terms of not commuting, you know, flexible work, there are a lot of things which the workers find it to be very useful. So, given this, and also for organizations, there are a lot of cost benefits when people work from home. So, given this, uh, you know, scenario where hybrid work is going to be the reality, how do we bring in this trust? How do we bring in this, uh, you know, collaboration and friendship? So, one way organizations are looking forward is through technology, uh, making technology your friend, you know, through augmented reality. There are these technologies which create a sense of physical space in a virtual space. Okay, that is one possibility. But I don't think, you know, that might be useful in a very long run. Probably, I don't know, with all these metaverse, augmented reality, virtual reality, it might be possible. But one way these can be augmented in a real space is giving control to employees. When I say control, hybrid work is going to stay. Okay, but give this freedom or autonomy to workers to decide when to go to office and when not to go to office. So this is like these boundaries which you set as an employee, give that freedom to the employee. The employee decides when will I open my door, when will I close my door. So whenever I want to work focused, I work from home. I mean provided your children are going to school, okay? And you have enough space in your house to, you know, work alone. So give that space. That space gives you a lot of focus. And whenever you want to socialize, come to office. Okay? So I think giving more control to employees as a policy to decide how they want to work and facilitate work from home and also work from office will, is what I think is a long-term solution. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ganesh, and thank you, Ms. Anandita. We are now uh, request Mr. Vinay Agarwal, Global Head Business HR, Tech Mahindra, to share some thoughts on emerging technologies in HR. Okay, thank you very much. So I'll just uh, uh, take a step back and see what has changed and uh, how big is that change, how reversible that change is, and therefore how technology can play a role to uh, complement that. So, so we have seen that the virtuality uh, brought by the pandemic has made fundamental changes in the, business, the way business is done. So every bank has uh, really quickly evolved in this short period. Uh, very critical process to be also done remotely. So account opening right from there to any, any transaction, anything you want to do, you don't need to visit the branch and you can do it virtually. So, so virtuality has made uh, fundamental change into the, in the globally all the industries. And HR is basically, I mean, inside the organization, so, so light change, things have changed outside the organization, which, which means the organization and the customer their acquisition, their retention, the actual transactions, 
uh, that has changed in all industries across the globe. So inside the similar changes are happened inside the organization also. So virtually the work, work is has done and there have been some issues that uh, would be fixed by organizations going forward. So the driver for, for adoption of technology has been these uh, changes and I would say the IT has been the biggest beneficiary of the pandemic. So it has been a blessing in this guy. Um, none of us want this pandemic to really continue but yeah, it's just incident that it has created huge demand for the, uh, for the IT. So the cloud migration, the cloud adoption has accelerated big time. Uh, in 2020, first quarter, P CIO used to say that, uh, show me a business case, okay, what is the return of investment and all that. Uh, and the whole conversation changed in a month's time saying, that, tell me how fast you can do it, how much it will cost. So that's one example of cloud and, and, and we have seen that the Google uh, was a late entrant, so uh, I mean AWS, Amazon was the first, the second was uh, Microsoft and, and then IBM came in and then Google came in and, and Google whole practice of the cloud has, has really blossomed in the last two years during pandemic. So uh, just examples of how technology adoption has really accelerated. So in, and, and uh, the HR fraternity I would say uh, all of us had very busy time attending multiple uh, round tables in this uh, because there's a huge change happening inside the company. The way we used to manage the performance, uh, goals were set, those were attracted, everything has changed, shops here, Tavi, uh, and now I think last one month or so we have seen so much of media press in mold lighting and you know, ethics, uh, <laughs> the question of culture, etc. So huge changes happening inside the organization and, and majority of them are related to people. <clears throat> So I just, uh, I was just basically scribbling to see how I, I portray the picture of UX, which is user design, a uh, lot of basically work happening. Uh, Angular, uh, Java was very popular now, it is React. Uh, so it just in the last two years, so it's too much change happening. So that's a process, user experience. Uh, in terms of analytics, so every process, whether it is uh, right from your talent acquisition to onboarding to performance management to uh, total reward and recognition, learning. So every process has small engine of analytics and then of course, uh, you know, you can uh, look at the data across process also and it drives a lot of insights. So that is um, how I see the adoption of Thank you, Mr. Vinay. Thank you. I will now request Mr. Ashish Mittal Group CHRO Srinidhi Education Group followed by Mr. Fani K. Associate Vice President, Data Science and Technology, SP Soft Global Hyderabad, to share their thoughts on HR tech, the next sunrise sector. Over to you, Mr. Ashish. Thank you. I'm just going to stand. I'm feeling sleepy after food. So I believe you'll be very frank about it. So yes, uh, coming down to HR tech uh, startups, I would say, See, HR techs are not there to take away the jobs of human resource professionals. They are there to assist them so that we are able to take better care of our employees. Because earlier the, the general rule was one HR manager for 500 employees, 400 to 500 employees. I mean, we know the, what's the life of HR and I'm sure some of them sitting on the dais would also know what's the life. But around the clock, you know, kind of we are working. So uh, these uh, technology platforms will actually help an HR manager to perform his or her job effectively and efficiently. Secondly, we all know about employee wellness, which has actually taken the top, uh, topmost priority on the scorecard of the every CEO because employee wellness is a decision maker. Employees will decide if it's an organization taking care of my wellness, which will include mental as well as physical. So only if they are taken care, I'll actually decide to stick onto the organization. As it is, HR people have high pressures. Managers, business managers, SBU heads, they want two minutes Maggie noodles. They want Ashish, I want the headcount as of yesterday to be on board. You know, so it's damn under, we work under terrible, terrible thin timelines. So point is, uh, it's very important for HR leaders that we have the least attrition. At least we try our best to retain our employees and take care of them. So HR tech uh, will really help us to perform our jobs better. And uh, as my fellow friend was mentioning about, uh, there are a lot of companies, organizations kind of contemplating whether we work from home, work from office, 2D, 3D model, three days, four days models, a lot of contemplants and uh, debates are going on. Uh, but I think your work from the remote work is gonna stick on. And there are some companies who are outrightly said, we're talking about uh, Microsoft and Twitter, 
they have said, I want, I mean, after the COVID, we had Omicron. So they said, my, my employees can invariably work from home permanently. So, I mean, the entire market is going through a huge churn and nobody has a clear-cut answer, what do we do, what we don't do. The easiest thing is to pass on HR heads. You guys have to ensure attrition numbers, hiring numbers, cost control, employee wellness, ESAT, CSAT scores, everything you guys have to handle. And I also talk to a lot of business leaders and tell them that employee wellness especially, it is not the complete responsibility of HR leaders. Okay, like I'm a ex I myself a very passionate sports person, so I say it's damn it every individual's responsibility to take care of their health. It's not a kindergarten that we tell, you know, you don't eat this, don't do that, you need to wake up early, time management, self-discipline. That's why we had uh, Pulela Gopichan's video this morning, it was very good, I would urge that everybody um, gets that video and watch that, where he mentioned that uh, without sports, the entire life is incomplete. Education is incomplete without sports. What we learn in sports, I mean, we'll, we may probably take four or five years or ten years or we may never learn in the four walls of classrooms. So self-discipline, time management, ultimately that's, these are the few skills which will actually help your students, your, I mean, final year graduates who join, to help to actually step up their ladders, to differentiate from the remaining crowd. So it is a responsibility of everybody, while HR is an enabler, a catalyst. So we will not take the complete onus and responsibility. Yes, we will ensure we are, have the best initiatives are taken care. We have a decent budget there for the organization. And yes, we are there for employees. But it's like you do your, and God helps only those who help themselves. So I think I would say HR techs will really help HR leaders to perform their job more effectively because a bot is available round the clock, 24 by 7. You ping and you get the answer. I mean, unlike a human being, which may take some time, although we have two or three different shifts in organizations. So HR Tech will really complement and help us to perform. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish. Uh, may I now request Mr. Fani to share his thoughts, please. Good evening, everyone. How are you all? Good. So how many of you are entrepreneurs? Any entrepreneurial mindset? Uh, anybody started this startup uh, in the HR space? OK. So are there a few over there? OK, hi. So uh, many of you have heard about health tech, agri tech, and many other technology is coming up, right? So what is this HR tech? Uh, have you ever thought about it? Do we really have a significance of that in the market? So I myself is an entrepreneur, so I always a uh, little intrigued with this um, HR things and all, okay? So uh, when it comes to the HR, uh, I mean, it is an evolving sector in any organization. You know, like our parents don't have this HR concept ever, right? They just go and collect the salary and that's it, right? So uh, as and when IT booming, as in uh, IT come into the existence, the HR, right? Now uh, HR sector came into the picture. So um, if you see nowadays, like even when I started my career, uh, the, the scenarios are different. But nowadays employees are sticking only to the company if they have a delight. Employee delight is the key. If you don't have the employee delight, they are moving out of the company. So there is a lot of necessity that what is that we can do uh, to uh, get the employee into the organization, retain the employee, and uh, have the uh, necessities for them. Right. So, uh, if you talk about uh, HR, uh, there are many activities that they do. Uh, but if you, if they go to the CFO and ask, like, we may need some budget, uh, they, he may say that, can we keep it aside? Uh, he don't allocate the enough budget for the HR segment. Uh, uh, very enthusiastically, right? But that is the key, actually. You know, without HR is directly related to the employee. Okay. So, uh, when it comes to the HR, if you s start like. I mean, I know uh, headhunting is one of the key, but that doesn't actually come into the HR, but that will be the part of your talent acquisition that is directly proportional to the uh, HR activities, right? If you list down their activities, every activity there is a huge gap where we are today and where we can be, all right? So I'll uh, justify my uh, discussion here. So for example, if you talk about uh, headhunting, uh, where, where do you find the uh, resources? Till now and 15 years back, where I started my career, it is a Naukari, right? So Naukari is the market leader to find any resource. And nowadays also people spending a lot of amount on Naukari. There is no other algorithm that is really beating Naukari's way of finding a resource, right? So there is a huge gap. If anybody wants to pick up that space and really develop an algorithm that can really give the good resources that match to the job description, that is a huge plus, okay? And there is a, have you ever heard about ranking to a profile? There is still now, it is evolving, 
but no profile is being any ranking or scoring. There is one company which started a, uh, which is a, a Bangalore based startup uh, that the name of that company is Belong. So what it does is takes a profile and for that person it searches in the Facebook, LinkedIn and GitHub and where all social media locations and tries to score that person and give it to the HR. So that releases a lot of, I mean that gives, saves a lot of time to the HR personnel going through the each profile. So uh, that kind of uh, initiatives are needed these days and that company also clearly segregates that if the person is shown to one company, it ensures that the same profile is not shown to the other company. So that, uh, that reduces your no-shows, right? No-shows is the biggest challenge for the HR people that reduces their no-shows and bidding. One person asks for 10 lakhs and he holds that offer and goes to the another person and asks for 12 lakhs. That is the biggest problem, I know. So that kind of bidding also... Uh, and uh, I'll give you some pointers and if you are interested, you can pick up a solution on top of it. Say for example, uh, if I'm being interviewed by Google and I'm selected for Google and should I be again interviewed by Microsoft? So same person is being interviewed at multiple places again and again. Why do we need it? It's again, if you, if you can avoid that one, it's a lot of cost saving, right? He's already a talented person, which you can expect, right? You can you can have a lot of cost savings, right? And a lot of time. So ultimately they are all tied up to your cost value, right? So if you can have a common platform where it can be already interviewed by an expert and you don't need to interview him again and again so that it saves a lot of cost. And the same thing with the background verification. Why every company has to do the background verification? Can they be done at once and with the blockchain technology and can it be utilized, right? And we talk about gender equality, right? Do we have any portal that focuses, I mean to say, women employees or women talent, right? So that can also be developed. So there are huge gap, only I'm talking about, I'm not getting into the HRMS, I'm not getting into your payroll, I'm not getting into your uh, employee delight, I'm not even getting into the retention and exit policy. Only in the acquisition part, you see a huge gap, okay? So you can really identify these gaps in any area and one gap, if you can define a problem statement properly, you can build a startup on top of it. That's what, we are still at the very core level of in the HR tech, okay? So I suggest if somebody wants to pick up those ideas and can help the global HR level, I mean, not just in India, you can help the global level, right? So that, those are all my suggestions. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. You. Fani and for your interesting ideas to the audience. Uh, now I'll invite Mr. Yadu Kishore, Director Human Resource, Mass Mutual, to share his thoughts on the evolving HR sector and roles. Sure. Um, I think ever since the pandemic hit us, uh, right through the pandemic and post-pandemic, HR professionals' role has evolved. First, they themselves had to adapt to the new normal, the new normal of the hybridity, the flexibility that the pandemic has thrown at um, everybody. So they had to become change agents and then help the organization to become, you know, that nimble and agile uh, to adapt to that new normal, right? So they had to help uh, the organizations to de redesign their org structure, create a, a culture where, you know, uh, managers are coached and mentored, uh, right? To help the team members feel included, help them get a sense of belonging you know, while everything is being done remotely uh, and, you know, on a hybrid model, right? So that's, that's, I think, first change that HR professionals had to undergo. They then had to adapt and then help the organization adapt to that new change. The other thing is, uh, with the whole game of flexibility that pandemic had brought about, there is uh, the talent uh, war, uh, the great resignation where people can work from anywhere, any location of their choice. Uh, and because of which, you know, there's a lot of attrition, there's a lot of churn in the talent market. So what that means for HR professionals is to help the organizations invest in not just here and now talent, but also build the talent pipeline for the future, which means in a lot of investment in training and development, learning and development. Uh, so that's another aspect of, uh, of what HR professionals' uh, role has evolved to. The third aspect is HR uh, has transformed or, or has um, try to become decentralized. So rather than having all of the control with HR, um, you know, helping, empowering the managers to, to take some of that control in, you know, engaging um, their team members, engaging the organization. And that's a, a third area where 
the HR uh, professional's role has changed. So those are some insights that I had, uh, Dr. Nair. Thank you so much, Mr. Yadu. I think this was an interesting discussion. And if there are any questions from the audience, we can take those. Any questions? These are HR people. They'll try to answer your question. So if you have anything, please ask. If you don't ask questions, then there's one more exercise. OK, that's a lovely smile. Thank you all so much. I want you to give a big round of applause to the distinguished panel. Thank you, and have a great evening. Thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to add one point uh, by mentioning that uh, in today's scenario, if we call it EX, is the employee experience which is extremely critical. And in today's changing times, uh, even the HR leaders, we are trying to understand what's happening because today we have the moonlighting policy, which is actually totally, uh, Infosys says uh, no two timings, we process is cheating. At the same time, we have Swiggy, which is green lighting the moonlighting policy. We have the gig economy, so the entire times are changing my, uh, because there are no fixed rules, there are no, there's no blueprint that, you know, this is the way you're supposed to take care of employees. So the role of HR is, all the more pressurizing, challenging, and I would say uh, a huge thankless task to all the HR professionals who are actually taking care of all the employees. Can we have a bigger round of applause for all the HR professionals, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you. A very uh, crisp and very short and a lovely session with great insights. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sajeev Nair, for such wonderful moderation. Uh, and. Uh, can I call upon Professor Ravindra Gupta, Vice Chancellor at Telangana University, to please give away the mementos to our panel discussion members here? Um, can I call uh, Sri Vinay Agarwal, Global Head Business HR, Tech Mahindra, to please accept a small token of appreciation? Can I call upon uh, Sri Fani Karnati, Associate Vice President? Data Sciences and Technology, SP Soft Global Hyderabad. Next, can I can I please have Ms. Anandita Mukherjee, Head Corporate Communications, Hyderabad Metro Rail. Professor, can I have uh, next Professor Ganesh MP, Head Entrepreneurship and Management, IIT Hyderabad. Can I have Sri Ashish Mittal, Group CHRO, Srinidhi Institutional Educational Group? Next, can I have Sri Yadu Kishore Nandikola, Director Human Resources, Mass Mutual? Last but not the least, for such wonderful moderation and waking up the audience, I would like to call Dr. Sujeev Nair, CHRO and Chief Transformation Officer, Resustainability Limited. Can I call all the speakers to come ahead for, the, for a group picture? Thank you. Thank you.